Sometimes we start out with something that is so unusual we just had to do a story about it. Not tonight. Tonight our first story is about something that's about as commonplace as it can be. We hardly give a thought to it because we almost always have plenty of good clean water. But as it turns out, that's a story. And we start out with something you hardly ever get to see. It is the sort of thing that's so common you just don't take much notice. It is, after all, just a water tank. But that's a statement which plays right into the hands of the people at the Missouri American Water Company. There's a lot that goes into thinking about um, a good tank design. Uh, this one holds three and a half million gallons of water. It's 99 feet tall. Um, the water has to turn in there on a regular basis to make sure that it's fresh. This tank off Highway 94 in St. Charles County had just been completely overhauled, and this was a rare chance to get inside before it filled back up. So we put on some shoe covers and crawled in. It's kind of surreal. After your eyes get used to the low light, there's not much to see. Smooth, almost featureless, freshly painted walls. Although you don't hire a couple of college kids for this job. Utility services company stripped it down and put on a zinc primer and then two coats of epoxy that will have to keep this water-filled tank clean and sealed for 10 to 15 years. When this tank fills up with water, the steel's going to give, move a little bit. This coating's got to be flexible enough to handle that. So when, when there is a little bit of movement in the steel, you don't have to worry about it breaking away. The tour, of course, doesn't take long. There's only a few features that draw the eye. The tall pipe that fills the tank from the top with water from the treatment plant, and the opening in the bottom takes it out to the water mains. And in case of any overfilling, there's a pipe that sends the overflow to a drain pipe back outside. And that's pretty much it. From here, the water goes out into the community, so that when we open a valve or turn on the faucet, there it is. And that's the end of the journey. But the water may eventually run off and end up back in the Missouri River, where the process would start all over again here at a place called Howard Bend. And this is the source of water used in much of St. Louis County and St. Charles County. But, but this is where it starts, right here. Absolutely. This is where it begins, and this is where it began 105 years ago. The company was originally formed under the name of West St. Louis Water and Light Company. And uh, by a matter of weeks before the 1904 St. Louis World's Fair, the company started operation. This water company would start serving St. Louis County suburbs. The city of St. Louis at the time already had its own municipal water system. It also had a water problem. And that's an interesting story. So before we continue the tour, a little bit of history. St. Louis used to be known for, among other things, its muddy drinking water brownish, cloudy river water. Too thick to drink, the saying went, but too thin to plow. It wasn't really unhealthy, it just wasn't very pretty. And in 1904, that was a problem. St. Louis was about to have a World's Fair, and water was going to be an important component in this World's Fair. They had planned to decorate the fair with lagoons, with waterfalls, with fountains. How would it look to the rest of the world if there's muddy water pouring out of the statuary? The city's water intake was at the chain of rocks near the confluence of the Mississippi and Missouri rivers, and there was still plenty of dirt in it when it was pumped throughout the city. A panel of experts looked at two solutions, building a filtration system or finding a new water source, but neither proposal met Mayor Wells' budget restrictions or his deadline. Whatever was done had to be in place by the World's Fair. So they tried something new, chemicals, coagulants, which pulled the dirt out of the water, and it cleared up. And even though they had to cut back on the chemicals when the seals and the fish at the fair started to die off, they got what they wanted. Crystal clear water was the visual centerpiece of the 1904 Louisiana Purchase Exposition. And that same year, the county water company started up. And while there are a lot more steps involved in treatment these days, a lot of cleaning and disinfecting, 
The process still includes the same step that the city started for the fair. They add coagulants, and then they let the water sit a while to let the big particles settle to the bottom. So in that middle chamber there, you can see the water is much darker, a chocolatey brown. And that is where all the hardness and over 90% of the solids are dropped out of the process almost immediately, right in that first chamber. And if you look at the contrast between the dark brown in the center and what's fallen over this weir, you can see that the clarity of the water is much improved. And so now the water is clear, but not clear or clean enough, not even close. The next step, they mix in chemicals to disinfect the water, kill bacteria, and they add more coagulants. The water is very slowly stirred in these basins, helping the additives sort of clump together the particles that are left in a process called flocculation. And so those slow mixing particles get larger and larger through the mixing process and then they move into the primary settling area where the heavier particles drop to the bottom. And still it's not ready but it's getting close. The water is then pumped indoors and here in the treatment plant it will get its final filtering. And the best thing for that? Well you can't do much better than what's found in nature. This water will seep down through sand and gravel before it gets pumped out to us. Most of the turbidity and the final step is taken out in the first few inches of the sand and then flows clean down through the rest of the filter. You don't need to change those filters. You just do a backwash. You run some water from the bottom up, flush out the impurities, and drain it all off. And to make sure everything is working as it should, you test the water every step of the way, from start to finish. They even take samples from customers' faucets throughout the service area. The treated water is pumped from the plant to the tanks, like the one we peeked inside. And then it's pumped out to the neighborhoods and the business areas and the industries. The peak water usage period in the summer, by the way, starts about 4 a.m. That's when the sprinklers start turning on.